And we're back. I can't express how absolutely dumbfounded I was at the amount of attention the first video got. Let's just say that I wasn't exactly, uh, guaranteeing that anyone would be jumping at the chance to listen to this girl drone on about the inaccuracies of character-based plush toys for a good 20 minutes or so. But hey, y'all really want to see more. I mean, I've gotten more when's part twos spammed at me than I can count on 20 hands and a foot. But for real, you guys can like chill out on that. Like, if you want. That aside, the amount of positive feedback and genuine excitement I've gotten from y'all really means a lot. Thanks for giving me the chance to ramble about this stuff even more. Before we get into the meat of it, I need to talk seriously about part one. I made some stupid, highly problematic mistakes, and I just want to clear the air and apologize for them. Here it is. I'm sorry for saying that this plush was based off of FNAF World's Cupcake. So, as many of you have pointed out to me in the comments, Funko's Cupcake Plush is actually based off of Toy Chica's Cupcake from FNAF 2, hence the light blue eyes and candle stripes, and of course, no teeth. How did I flub that up? I don't know, I think the bimbo gas leakage in my house has finally hit my brain. Second thing, I mentioned that I thought Toy Freddy's plush was based off of Help Wanted's Toy Freddy model due to both of their colors being the same weird dark brown instead of actual Toy Freddy's light orange. And yeah, this was just wrong. <laughs> I forgot that this plush was an exclusive for Wave 1 somehow, which existed way before Help Wanted did. So give that theory a flip-flop around and there, that's the spice. Third thing, I guess I accidentally used bootleg and unofficial plushy images at multiple points? That's something some of you were saying, so oops, I guess. I'm not really knowledgeable on the intricacies of official versus unofficial Funko plushes. They all just kind of look bad to me anyway, so don't really know the minor differences to tell them apart. I'm sorry, I'm sorry! And last thing, for Foxy, I left the hook out of his design, not really able to find a way to incorporate it in a manner that didn't look stupy dum dum to me. But for those of you that might want to see what it would look like, here's an edit at Donovan Art T drew and sent to me on Twitter. This is very cute, go check them out. Anyways, enough of this intro stuff, let's jam. I would obviously recommend that you watch part one first if you haven't seen it, as I go over all the rules and guidelines I'm going by whilst designing these plushies. If you don't want to though, here's the rule list real quick before you watch. Also, because FNAF 2's enemy count has practically doubled overnight, Man, those little scampers breed like rabbits, don't they? I'm going to be splitting this game into two parts. I know, you might be bummed out that you've waited several months for the FNAF 2 gang and you're only getting half of them for now, but I figured it would be better to do this instead of making y'all wait for even more several months. So here we go. Here's all of the characters from Five Nights at Freddy's 2 made into proper plushies, part one. <laughs> Up first, it's everybody's favorite gamer and comedy man, Toy ah. Freddy. Sex. No. As I touched on in the last video, Funko's Toy Freddy is essentially just normal Freddy with a few addendums, which is kind of expected for a toy company. If you have a Freddy Fazbear and then a slightly different version of Freddy Fazbear, it makes the most sense economically to just reuse the base. Still don't get the completely wrong color though, that still boggles my mind brawl render looking ass. Ours is going to look more like the actual design, of course. Toy Freddy has an overall chubbier appearance with a different head shape and rounder body. As well as this, he has a considerably different face which will be applied to our design. And as is always our job, it seems, the colors will be corrected. So here's the motherfucker. I exaggerated his chubbiness a little bit, giving him a rounder body to really accentuate the difference in size and shape between him and regular Freddy. Also makes him look way more like a big, fat, cuddly teddy bear, which I love. I made his snout smaller and correctly shaped, as well as his other facial features, including his eyebrows, nose, eyes, and ears, which are actually smaller and thinner, just like Toy Freddy's. For all of the toys, we'll have these colored seam rings around the eyes, similar to how they look in-game. They started doing this later on with some of the other toys, fun times, and rock stars, but not Toy Freddy for some reason. I really did just phone it in on this one, huh? I made sure to add all the other important details, like his unique tie, the two black buttons, the large red cheeks, and the slightly taller hat with a red stripe. And of course, most importantly of all, he's rocking his correctly light orangey base color. Poor guy, it was so dirty, just needed a bath. Use some Fazbear brand shampoo. Moist 80s carpet scented. And hey, there's our first one complete. Up next, we got little, little, little fucking toy Bonnie. Clear the stage, for the star of our show is the stage. 
Toy Bonnie, in my mind, is kind of the poster child of FNAF 2. He was used in a lot of the teasers, is one of the first animatronics to become active, and has the most iconic design of the three-stage toy animatronics, in my opinion at least. When I think of this game, he's what comes to mind for me, and I'm sure it's probably the same for a lot of you. Given his importance, it's great that Funko chose him to be one of the esteemed few to receive a plushed toy in their likeness. So let's see him. Okay, now, despite this being one of the worst Funko plushies, I actually do like this little guy, just not for the reasons they intended. He's just so stupid looking, like, I can't help but fall in love with him. Just, why does he look like that? There's a lot of issues to talk about here. There's his huge ping pong paddle ears, his weird far apart eyes, his little perpetually worried mouth, and his random super thick eyebrows for some reason. Overall, a pretty poor and inaccurate representation of old T-Bon, albeit weirdly adorable. So let's fix that up. First thing I want to mention, I gave him a different body shape from the rest, being rounder at the bottom much like his model is. Damn, he's got a little bunny tail as well, which is a detail a lot of people forget his model actually has. And including me, I forgot to add that until later. For his ears, I made them both flopped over this time just to set him apart from his original self even more. And his face is now fixed up. Not a whole lot to say, just gave him a lot of tweaks that added together makes him feel more like Toy Bonnie. Probably the most important aspects are his appealing snout and mouth and larger eyes and pupils. Oh, and he's got little triangle flaps coming off of the eyes to act as his eyelashes, not whatever these tiny little things are. So there you go. Terrific little bunny we got there. Uh -oh. Now we got a chicken to fix. <laughs> This one actually doesn't look that bad. I think it's a cute style and isn't poor quality in any regard. It's just not consistent with the rest at all. Like, why did they suddenly decide to give a plush a more stylized face and completely change the body and feet base when they haven't done the same for literally any other plush up to this point? The puppet is still stuck with the exact same base shape as everyone else, and Toy Chica for some reason gets to be drastically different, even to a fault. Whatever, Funko, keep making no fucking sense, I guess. And, as I mentioned in part one in passing, she's the only Funko FNAF plush to have individual toes instead of the big teddy bear nubs. And the fact that this had to be Toy Chica out of all the possible characters to give this exclusive design detail to doesn't bode well in regards to the intentions of the Funko employee responsible for this. For my design, I gave her all the features she would have if they had kept up the design consistency, with the same eyes, relative body shape, and lack of pedal digits. However, her body is slightly altered, being the same body Toy Bonnie has, but with the top portion made smaller to give her a similar silhouette to her model. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Her beak is pointier and more triangular than OG Chica. Her hair tufts are long individual flaps, which might need some wire inside or something to keep their shape, and her bib is the correct design. However, you may have noticed that there is a certain aspect of her appearance that is absent in this design. Her toy cupcake. Why does she not get one just like our first Chica? Well, that's because she gets something special, something arguably more important to her in-game appearance. Watch this. And BAM! A magnetic removable beak, just like how she loses her beak in-game. Though, instead of a horrifying teethy nightmare hole, uh, we have a cute little smile underneath. I would absolutely adore a plush with this feature. Like, look how cool that would be. And there you go, put her with the others. So here's a quick one to get out of the way. For the toy cupcake, just pretend the blue alt I made under false pretenses for the last one had no teeth and was made for this video instead. There, a toy cupcake. No mistake at all was made. I am intelligent. So you're probably expecting Mangle here, but I'm actually saving them for the next video. I know, I know. Hey, get the fuck, get the fuck away from- hey, hey. But don't think you're missing out on any gender ambiguity for this video, because I'm going to be doing a Funtime Foxy, aka Mangle's original form. I'll call them Toy Foxy because that actually makes fucking sense. Hold on, you, you know what? Let me level with you for a sec. You watching the video right now, sitting there with your bag of goldfish and quivering inquisitive eyes? Dear viewer, 
Can we both agree that calling this character right here, this character, Funtime Foxy, and then later down the line, naming another completely separate character the exact same name is stupid? This untouched version of Mangle was never seen in the game physically, aside from this poster here and possibly one of the teasers leading up to the game. They also were never given a name. However, we all just kind of assumed their name would be Toy Foxy, aligning with the other three. So that's what I will continue to call them. I don't care what this piece of shit has to say. Although we haven't seen them in a canonical in-game setting in full, we did get merch of them surprisingly. One figurine and one plushie. Why does it have a tongue? Why does it have a tuft of hair? Why does it have colored rings on the eyeballs themselves? And why are the eyelashes growing out of the pupils? This is some body horror right here. This is another terrible one that I actually kind of love. Like, how could you not be absolutely smitten with this face? Come on. Using Mangle's design, this poster, and the figurine, here's what I came up with. I used Toy Bonnie's body shape as they seem to be pretty similar. I created an all new head and face more accurate to what it should look like, with a creased forehead, two longer fur spikes, longer, thinner ears, and a longer and uniquely shaped snout. Similar to our old Foxy, the lower jaw is exaggerated due to Mangle's jaw being quite large, and I gave it the same weird curvy shape. The nose is wider, more rectangular, and higher up on the snout, about in the middle. And some good old lipstick, which I think is what this weird tongue thing was supposed to be. I'm honestly not sure. For the eyes, I converted these gigantic horrifying eye cavities into longer teardrop shaped eye rings as to maintain the cuteness. To make the tie look like Mangle's, it's got some layered fabric pieces to give it that unique fanned look. And finally, we have the little cotton tail, which seems like an incorrect detail, but it's heavily implied that Toy Foxy would actually have this, not the long foxtail like the figurine has. Look, it's right there on Mangle's model. Sure, you might say that it's simply a random animatronic part that was mixed up into Mangle's mess of put together limbs and wasn't on Toy Foxy's original body. And yeah, that could be true, but I think it makes more sense to base the design off of something we've actually seen in game rather than this out of place detail on the figurine. Anyways, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> and now we get to tackle one of the worst of the Funko ass bunch, Balloon Boy. Why didn't you come out? Um, you guys said? Hi. Man. No. Um, I, I heard what he said, but I'm sure not, I'm not... It wasn't really, really clear what was- If you thought Toy Chica was bad in terms of straying from the formula, then boy, do I have some bad news for you. <laughs> this is just pretty much garbage all around. Almost everything about this is low quality. We have everyone's favorite crackly printed colors. Thankfully, it's only for the stripes though. His face is untouched in that realm with sewn features like Chica's, but this time the drastically different style isn't even appealing. He's just ugly, man. They really did commit the cardinal sin of drawing out each individual tooth in a simplified cartoony adaptation of the character with a smile. What is wrong with you, Funko? And geez, at least Toy Chica's was adjacent to the others in size and shape. This one is not even close. He's got this huge flat looking boxy head and these thin spindly limbs hanging off. This icky body base is something that was started by the sister location wave, seen with Baby and Ballora, but in my opinion, it looks even worse here. This just looks like a dog toy to me, I'm sorry. Hey, at least people won't be upset about me shitting on this one. I mean, it's Balloon Boy, that's a free pass if I've ever seen one. So let's force feed this little cretin with some the juice that turns you into a more appealing plushy juice. Oh, dang it. This one was surprisingly the most complex redesign I've done this far. There's a lot here, so I'll talk about just a few specific things worth mentioning. His face was made to be an appealing interpretation of his in-game look, with a mouth similar to the Toy Chica one we did. He's just a happy little fella. His hair and hat are thick plush parts coming off of his head, and his little propeller thingy is an actual rod with the propeller on top, instead of a recolor of Funko's Chica hair like they did with this one. Again, it'll probably need some plastic on the inside to keep it stiff and upright. We have some thicker seams separating the shirt and arms as well as the pants line. And we have some actual plastic buttons on him this time. The most ambitious addition, I think, are his props. The balloon to his right and the balloon sign in his left. 
These are firmly attached to his arms, sewn right through so they're stuck in there all secure and such. I thought about making these magnetic props like the cupcake that stick to the end of his arms, but I ultimately decided against it in favor of making them a permanent part of his form. The only time we've seen him without these props in his hands is in the vent in FNAF 2, which was later sort of retconned in FNAF Help Wanted, so I didn't want to make it needlessly complicated. As much as I'd like everything on the plushie to be plush material, realistically the sign would probably have to be plastic, so we'll go with that. The balloon, however, will still be squishable. So there, throw another one on the pile. And yay, it's time for some original plushies. Last time we only had one, but this time we have a whole two. I promise there will be more past this point. First is JJ. This little ankle biter is less of a character and more of a super rare PNG that can spawn under your desk and do absolutely nothing. All we see of her is some of her face, but in FNAF World we got to see a version of her in full form. Yeah, she's just a recolor of BB, so as you may have guessed, that's all we gotta do for this one. I removed her props though, because no one really knows what her purpose was in universe. I mean, her name certainly isn't giving any hints. Did she dispense something? Like, did she hand out, I don't know, candy? Maybe some Tylenol? Also, the in-game model does not have eyelashes, but FNAF Worlds does. So here's an alt, because women be having eyelashes and shit. Oh, finally, now we can market to gender norms. No more of this, oh my god. And our final plush for today... RWQFSFA Shadow Bonnie, also known as this keyboard spam, is another easter egg similar to JJ, but has more significance given that they've appeared a couple times in later games. Also, they can crash your game.exe fangame style too, so hey, that's neat. This is essentially just Toy Bonnie but black silhouette, so this is going to be another recolor. However, like Golden Freddy, I'm going to be changing a few decently significant things. Here's what I did. They have an open mouth this time, with more teeth than actual Toy Bonnie has, just like the Shadow's appearance in-game. Both ears are sticking straight up, again to mirror their in-game appearance, as well as to differ from the other two Bonnies. Their pupils are smaller, as well as being pure white, and a few details were removed to give them that odd, smooth, shadowy look. The insides of the ears, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, the cheeks, and the snout freckles. And there we are, half of the little pizza gremlins from Five Nights at Freddy's 2. In the next one, we'll be covering all of the rest of them that I missed. Stay tuned for that, I say, with a crooked, devilish grin. Viewers beware, you're in for- Hey, once again, thank you so much for watching my scribbles and ramblings and stuff. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as you did the last one, and I hope you'll stick around for all my other stuff. I really do enjoy making these, they're lots of fun, but they do take a bit of time to create. Uh, I'm not doing videos full time, at least not yet, so these are mostly being worked on in my spare time. And uh, these are videos with like a lot of artwork I have to make, so that kind of takes up a lot of time, and they're just longer form videos in general. Um, so that's kind of why it's been a couple of months some, since my last video. I do want to make this clear as well, that I'm not planning on being a FNAF channel. Um, I do love FNAF, it's very important to me, uh, and I'll still be talking about it in this series of course and what other, other videos I decide to make. Um, but it's most likely going to be a smaller portion of the content that I actually make in the long run. This is going to be my bigger Meteor series that sort of runs in the background behind my usual content that I'll upload more consistently. This sort of thing will be a lot more sparse moving forward, so try to keep that in mind. If you haven't seen it, I posted a video about Sonic Music Easter eggs a little bit ago, so go check that out if that interests you. Uh, if you plan on staying just for the FNAF plushies, it's totally okay. I understand if the other stuff isn't really your cup of tea, uh, but just know that it's not going to be my one and only focus or anything. I have a lot of other stuff planned, so please don't just like spam where's FNAF plushies and everything I post. That would, that would be cool. I know that's a lot to ask of the internet, but you know, might as well say it. If you want to see what I'm doing regularly and get updates, I'm very active on Twitter, so you can go follow me there. I'm also planning on possibly setting something up for you guys to support me if you wish. Uh, I don't have anything cemented yet, but stay on the lookout for that if that's something you'd be interested in, possibly. So, yeah, anyways, I'll stop droning on. Uh, here's a, here's a funny outro bit. Uh, I don't, I don't know what's gonna be. Take it, here it is.